today's topic is perception of sound in the last few slides we have already finished about how sound is transduced when the oscillatory movements of the xylem membrane causes transient changes in transmembrane voltage of hair cells and consequently the generation of action potential or the generator potential in the cochlear afferent fibers now we are going to discuss about how sound is perceived in brain and there are a few theories behind this we'll discuss about the place principle and another one is volley theory to better understand the perception of sound first we should know how fluid inside the cochlea is moving and according to that how the xylem membrane is moving upwards and downwards in this diagram this is a schematic diagram of an uncoiled cochlea and this is starting from the oval window ending in the round window this is the foot plate of steps this foot plate of steps is connected with the oval window by an annular ligament and you can say this diagram you can say there is no resonor membrane and there is, this is the scala vestibuli and the scala media so we are showing in this schematic diagram it is almost a single chamber we are just not talking about the resonor membrane because it is very thin now what is happening when there is a positive pressure when there is a positive pressure the fluid is moving inside so what is happening by the physics because it is a talking about the single chamber the vesicular membrane will go down okay fine now what is happening when this is moving backwards means because of the foot plate of steps is moving forward and backward what is happening to the fluid the when foot plate is moving forward the basilar membrane is going down okay now when it is moving backwards means when the foot plate of step is moving towards the uh, middle ear there is creating a negative pressure and so what is happening this basilar membrane is going upwards and the hair cells are touching to the tectorial membrane the next slide we are going to show another diagram how the hair cells are touching to the tectorial membrane when it is moving upwards means basilar membrane is moving upwards and stimulating the already we have discussed about the movement of the basilar membrane how it is moving upwards and downwards now in this diagram we are going to show what is happening to the stereo cilia when the basilar membrane is moving upwards and downwards at this normal time when there is no sound is moving towards the basilar membrane so that means in the resting state the hair cells are not touching or just touching the tectorial membrane that means there is no bending of stereo cilia you can see there is no bending of stereo cilia but when the basilar membrane is moving upwards due to the negative pressure into the scala media or the scala vestibuli there is a shear stress in this hair cell or the stereo cilia causing the bending of stereo cilia and these cells are getting depolarized so nerve signals are passing from this hair cell through the afferent nerve and going to brain or the central nervous system and the exactly opposite is happening when the basilar membrane is moving downwards because of the movement of the basilar membrane towards down this hair cells or the stereo cilia again coming to the normal position so that cells are getting hyperpolarized so nerve signal are just stopped so this way the bending of this Uh, stereo cilia which is caused by the upward and downward movement of the basilar membrane is responsible for the nerve signal which is passing through the afferent nerve or the cochlear division of eighth cranial nerve now we discuss about the fiber arrangement of basilar membrane this is very much required to understand uh, 
uh, the perception of sound. Now this is schematic diagram of visual membrane, cochlea. Here we can see one end, it is an oval window. And this is round window. So this is the base of the cochlea. This is starting point. And opposite side, this apex, where the helicotrema is present. And this basilar membrane is a fibrous in character, which has 20,000 to 30,000 of basilar fibers. And actually, it projects from the a bony structure called modulus. And this uh, fibers are stiff and free in one end. This is a stiffness is highest, whereas the basilar membrane is very much free in the opposite side. And why it is happening? One point, the length of the fiber uh, is increased progressively from one end to opposite end. So from this end of the basilar membrane to opposite end of the basilar membrane, the length of the fiber increases 12 folds. Just opening opposite is happening with the diameter of the fiber. At the helicotrema, the diameter of fiber is very less compared to the beginning at the base of the basilar membrane and it decreases, the diameter decreases by 100 folds. Because of this arrangement of basilar membrane fibers, it acts as a reed-like structure like any musical instrument. This basilar fibers can vibrate with a different frequency sound at a different place. That is, we are going to discuss in the next slide. How it is setting in the different part of the basilar membrane with a different frequency sound. Now we will discuss about the Prell's principle. Before that, we have to know how sound travels through the basilar membrane. This is a schematic diagram of uh, three cochlea where the basilar membrane is situated. And A, we can see it is written the high frequency sounds, B is for medium and C is low frequency sound. As we have discussed, the end part of this basilar membrane is very thin and with a long fiber compared to the starting point of the basilar membrane where it is the fiber is very thick and the length of the fiber is also very less. So this part of the basilar membrane can be stimulated by very high frequency sound and it can travel this much. After this, this, this high frequency sound cannot travel through the uh, basilar membrane. Whereas this diagram we can see this is the B is for the medium frequency sound. This medium frequency sound can travel this much. After that, it dies off. And the last C we can see the low frequency sound can travel the whole the basilar membrane, whole of the basilar membrane and dies off after traveling the whole length because this part of this basilar membrane are very thin and length of this basilar membrane are also, fibers are also very high. So the place theory uh, can be, you can, you can combine both. One is a traveling wave theory and the place, places of the basilar membrane which part of the basilar membrane are getting stimulated by which frequency sound. It is combination of both. We are going to discuss in the next slide. Continuation of the last slide. The same thing we are going to discuss. There is the amplitude patterns of the sound. The frequency between 200 to 8000 cycles per second. Now, in the schematic diagram, we can see that the displacement of the steps. There is a here, we can see this is zero starting with the zero whereas ending at the 35 this is zero distance from the steps whereas 35 at the apex the distance of the basilar membrane you can see we have already discussed the low frequency sound stimulates the end part of the basilar membrane that is 200 cycles per second whereas for this diagram we can see the medium frequency at the mid part of the basilar membrane whereas a high frequency is at the beginning part of the basilar membrane. So, here we are saying that this is the place theory or the place principle, the which place of the basilar membrane are getting stimulated with the which frequency sound that is very important. 
depending on the length of the basala membrane starting from the apex to the starting from the base to the apex which frequency sound is stimulating which place of the basala membrane this is nothing but the place principle because the high frequency sound this dies off between this length of the basala membrane it cannot travel whereas the low frequency sound can travel the whole length of the basala membrane and stimulate only the this part of the membrane which is near the apex so this is called the place principle maybe the traveling wave theory also. So this is another diagrammatic representation of place principle with a tonotopic map this is the tonotopic map tonotopic map showing this is the apex of the cochlea and this is the base of the cochlea whereas the high frequency sound are getting stimulated and the low frequency sound are giving stimulating the basala membrane this is a tonotopic map here you can see it is a traveling the high frequency sound can travel this much it dies off after this whereas a medium frequency sound can travel at the middle of the basement basilar membrane this is the basilar membrane middle of the basilar membrane after it dies off it cannot stimulate further whereas the low frequency sound as we told as we discussed earlier it can travel whole length of basilar membrane coming to the volley principle where we can see how the low frequency sound are stimulating the nerve cells or the hair cells here the group of neurons or group of hair cells works together or fire together to give a single action or the action potential that is a volley's principle this volley's principle actually works for a very low frequency sound it is not uh, actually right for high frequency or the medium frequency sounds and uh, this is this uh, volley's principle uh, acts when some person is listening some music or when some person is uh, talking or uh, due to speech perform, uh, perception now here this low frequency sound cannot produce a proper action potential so that one nerve can take uh, the signal to the brain it is not enough so clusters of nerve can fire and the neural impulse in a rapid succession maybe the same neuron re repeatedly give a produces the receptor potential so lots of receptor potential will summit and give an action potential what we have learned before summation it is actually summation of the receptor potential giving rise to uh, an action potential so which can travel through the afferent nerve and this is the volley means a rapid succession when volley it's uh, it happens through the gunshot it's coming out from the bullet the bullets are coming out from the gun in succession so this is actually happened the nerves are firing successively and the low frequency sound are stimulating the hair cells which cannot fire alone and give an action potential this is responsible it implies for the low frequency which is between 20 to 2000 cycles per second and this is a chief mechanism for transmitting most speech and the music to the brain Here we end the discussion about the theories of hearing and that is a mechanism responsible for hearing at the level of cochlea. Next we will discuss in the next class how the auditory pathway, the nucleuses and the, where the afferent nerve ends and from where the efferent nerve starts and into the hair cell.